Special Legislative Management Committee special agenda um, for Monday, December 13th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. And you can call the meeting to order at 6.31. Um, item two on our agenda is to uh, approve the SLMC minutes from our December 6th meeting. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, Jill, and a second is Pam? Yes. All right, why don't we, any discussion, any comments? No? Okay, so uh, why don't we vote? Um, all approved? Aye. 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 Okay, so that's unanimous. Item number three is to populate the redistricting committee. I could have a motion for that. I'll make a motion, Cindy Parham. All right, Cindy. Second. I'll second. Don't and we have to put in names? Yes. Okay. So we have um, Hal Schwartz and um, Jill Vergara. Um, and uh, we Karen have. No, I'm no, sorry. It's, it's, it's Hal Schwartz and Karen Wackerman. And Karen Wackerman. I'm sorry, Jill. I'm looking at you on screen. Hal and Karen Wackerman, as previously uh, advised, no changes. And Pam? Um, we have myself and Karen McCormick. Okay. Um, unless there's a discussion or questions, we can we can vote on that item. So a motion to approve those four for the redistricting committee. Yes, Cindy. Okay. Pam, are you motioning, or do we have a motion well, for that? I started the motion, so I should just I go back and say that. Well, would I make a motion for Jal and Karen? No, you can do it all all four of them. Okay. All a right, motion so to approve those names. Make a motion to approve the names of Hal Schwartz, Karen Wackerman, Karen McCormick, and Pam Iacona for the redistricting committee. I'll second it. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 So that passes unanimously. And then item number four is the approval of the redistricting charge. Um, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, Jill. And a second? I'll second it for discussion purposes. Okay. All right, Pam. I know you sent us some uh, an email and then uh, a revised backup. Um, yeah, I had some proposed changes if you guys were all amenable. Um, the Secretary of State's office finally put out the election calendar um, for 2022, and they've listed the primary as August 9th. And I um, checked with the town attorney to find out when the statutory requirements are to notify voters for the um, polling locations. And um, it's 31 days. So if you back that up, we would need to let voters know what their polling locations are by July 8th. With that in mind, and the goal of, I think, you know, we're all in agreement that we'd like to try and get this done so that we don't have 17 voting locations for um, the primary, which would be costly and labor intensive, that we should try and have our end goal be to vote on this as an RTM um, at the June 27th meeting. That would then allow us to set a timeline for the redistricting committee to meet and start reporting in January of 2022, since that'll be our next regularly scheduled meeting. And then the goal then would be to have the materials to the moderator and the town clerk by 10 a.m. on April 12th. And what does that allow for? It allows for the redistricting ordinance to go to LNA in time for this to sit on not just two, but three agendas. So you're building in a little bit of a fail safe there. Um, and if we don't have any issues and it comes out of LNA and it goes to the body and there's no issues, you could probably vote on it as early as May, um, but you would have a, a, a hard end date of the June meeting. 
And just to give you a little bit of background, um, that item number 10 is um, sort of the fail safe that we built in from the last redistricting. Um, whereas if we couldn't get anything done, the redistricting committee would be noticed for that evening to go back and to reach a solution to bring to the body. So um, I think if we follow the, the timeline that I put forward, we should be able to get this done as long as we're all committed to doing the work together, which I believe that we are. Um, you all had put together something that said that we needed, you were gonna try and do this in February. I just, I don't think it meets the rules to regulate and I just don't think it's a realistic timeline. Um, as you may or may not know, our ordinances need to sit on two agendas before we can adopt them. So we can't send them in February and then adopt it in February as well. So right out of the gate, um, you know, there was a, a miscalculation. So anyway, I hope you're amenable to this. I, I think it's fair and reasonable and sets a reasonable expectation for everybody. Um, those are my thoughts for amendments. Jill? Uh, yeah, I think that the um, correction needs to be that on item number nine, we meant to say that uh, in that first sentence that it should, that they, it needs to be submitted to the RTM no later than the regularly scheduled RTM meeting of April 25th. Um, I just don't know that you're setting the committee up realistically to get this work done in time. I have sat on the last one, it took us 10 months to get it done. I don't think that it'll take that long this time because we have the benefit of computers that we didn't have, but I, I just, I don't think it's a reasonable expectation. But the reason why we set it for April 25th was that we were told that we need 90 days before the primary to submit it to the state so that the polling locations are um, accepted by the state and we can we can use those polling locations. So it was our understanding that if the state wasn't given 90 days before an election that we wouldn't be able, we'd have 17 different polling locations for that August primary. If the August primary has 17 locations, then the general uh, election will have 17 locations as well. Jim, do you know anything about that, that there has to be 90 days for a polling location? Um, but I'm not sure where you got that information, Jill. I just went to the statute, 9-169 of the statutes, which uh, gives the 30 day or 31 day time period. Uh, nine. 9-169 was where we got the 90 days. Um, I admittedly, I, I wasn't the one who looked at the language. Um, so I'm sorry, I can't really speak. I, I should go back and read 9-169, but um, it's from our registrar of voters, Matt Wagner, who, um, said that the language is there in 9169 that the state needs 90 <coughs> days. Do you know if that's if we change a polling location? Uh, possibly. What was but the question, Pam? It's highly possible that a polling location will be changed for a district if we're changing districts, isn't it? Well, actually, no. If we if we follow what we did last time, we should try and stick with and 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 per our charge, it's going to be an objective not to change a polling location. But perhaps it's unavoidable. Situation and 169 itself, without any following letters, uh, speaks to the polling places, and that's uh, 31 days before an election. And, and uh, I'll, I'll share this with you and, and your your committee now, if you want me to. And and I'm the the statutes are, you know, not easy to read, which is typical of legislation, but uh, I believe that's 
correct. And I see nothing about 90 days in any of these. So I'm open to uh, any contrary views, but that's that's what I've seen. And uh, I'm all ears if, if there's some other statute that addresses this that I'm not aware of. <clears throat> it, the 90 days isn't applicable to um, changing polling places. It's it's I it's about changes to voting districts. The legislative body of any county, consolidated town, city, consolidated town, or borough may divide and from time to time redivide such municipality into voting districts. The registrars or voters of any municipality taking such action shall provide a suitable polling place in each district. But if the registrars fail to agree as to the location of any polling place or places, the legislative body shall determine the location thereof. Polling places to be used in an election shall be determined at least 31 days before such election. So that speaks to both the uh, changing the districts, redistricting, and also the polling places. Um, the applicable language is any change in the boundaries of voting districts made within 90 days prior to any election or primary shall not apply with respect to such election or primary. Meaning anything within those 90 days wouldn't be applicable. You have to do it far out before the 90 days. So Nine one sixty nine. Yeah, that's. Uh, it must be a uh, a subsection of nine one sixty nine. It's it's. Pam, do you recall the um, the timeline when you guys? We it took us ten months. So we ha and we were coming off. We were filing ours so that it wouldn't have to. It was already. We were already behind. We were like in an off year. Right. It was twenty fourteen. Right. When that. I think so. I don't. Yeah. I am trying to text Matt to see, um, but he sent me, he just sent me that language. He's pretty sure that, that it, there's a 90 day requirement. Sorry. Okay, rather we get this right. I'm just getting him the access code and meeting number for. Oh, I, I've got it still. I've got it. Um, yeah, any change in the boundaries of voting districts made within 90 days prior to any election or primary shall not apply with respect to such election or primary. So, so we have to get it done by April. Yes. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And so then, like you said, it needs a wiggle room just in case LNA holds on to it. So um, that's why we built in that extra month too. All right. So this needs to go. When does it need to be to the town clerk by then? The week before the committee? So that, was that date correct? Yeah, so the hard and fast rule for us, to the, for the RTM to vote on it is by April 25th, um, and it needs to get to um, the clerk 
no later than February 14th if we're building in that extra month for l and review. It, it might need to go there earlier, Jill. Um, hold on. Because that would be two full calendar months um, before the RTM plus an extra month. Right, but I think the date actually to go to the clerk might be the week before. Uh, let me just pull up the calendar. So the RTM meeting that month is the 28th. The committee meeting is the 14th. So it should be February 8th. It should be by 10 a.m. February 8th. I'm sorry, can you explain why is that? Why does it Because need to be all materials that need to be distributed to the RTM need to be in the clerk's office 14 days prior to the RTM meeting, and her deadline per the rules to regulate is 10 a.m., so that would be 10 a.m. February 8th. Okay, because for that, that meeting, it's our RTM meeting is on the 28th, so 14 days before that is it's the, two, it's, it's the Tuesday before the committee meetings that the materials okay. are due. Okay, got it. So February so, so then it should say for approval no later than February 8th. I'm sorry. The materials should be there no later than February 8th. 10 a.m. on February 8th and then approval is that April date. Is that the 25th? Yeah. Um, all right, I'm just going to go on record and saying we might not be able to make that date. I don't know. This is very ambitious. We are working on the situation because we could hold the election, the primary at the old polling places, right? And then do a redistricting. No, you can't. If we hold our primaries at a certain location, we have to hold the general at a at that same, those locations. Um, and the other issue is that the primaries are the more expensive ones to hold. So we really don't want 17 locations for our primaries. And just so you know, 17 locations doesn't mean physical locations. It means it means polling stations. So within a district, but it's still manpower, labor, and notification. Yeah, it's a problem. It's a lot. So I think that I'm hopeful that the um, members we've appointed to this committee, which is a really important committee, will um, get their heads together and, and get this done in a timely way so that we don't have to expend money unnecessarily. Yeah. I'm going to look into that issue because, I mean, it's, it's just the right thing to do to see the what if scenario. That is, what if you had a polling places or districts which were different in a primary than in the general election? Um, I, I confess I haven't researched it, but I think I should. It's not allowed under state statute. We cannot have different polling locations from primaries versus general elections. Whatever we do for our primaries, we need to do for our general. It's section 9-438. All right, but just, I'm fine adopting it with the dates that you just gave this evening, Jill, but Jim, if you could just find out if there's any wiggle room whatsoever so that we can find out if we do have any additional runway at all. We're not voting on anything on this right now, right? 
I so thought, was sorry. Yeah, we need to adopt the charge because now the committee has to start to work, especially if it really is April, whatever, then there's like no, there's, we're gonna have to convene the first week in January and get moving. The last question you asked Jim though, Pam and Jim, is that something you can tell us tonight or is that something you have to find out offline? No. He's gonna have to research it. We can count on me getting to it tonight, definitely. I think what you should do is stick to your aggressive timeline and then by the time you have your first meeting, I'll, I'll have an answer to the question. I think that's fair. We can adopt it this way, have him research it, and we can always amend the, the charge if that's agreeable to everybody if we get different information. I think that's reasonable. Me too. Okay, can we do a run through on the dates as they should appear now? Um, should I read item nine as I think that it should be revised? Yeah, please. And, and okay. before we do that, eight is as corrected by, um, or as revised by Pam. January, 2022. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Jill, go ahead. Okay. Um, so item nine would be the RC proposed RO shall be submitted to the RTM for consideration and approval no later than the regularly scheduled RTM meeting of April 25, 2022. Accordingly, the RO shall need to be proposed by the RC no later than February 8th, 2022 at 10 a.m. and referred to the Committee on the Legislation and Administration as prescribed by Rule 32 of the RTM Rules to Regulate. And then paragraph 10, <clears throat> looking at those um, amended that was just That was just grammar. Strike any and all and just write all oh, and then Referred, referred back yeah. And, yeah. All right, so we need a motion to vote on. Didn't we have a motion already from? For just for discussion, Cindy. Okay. So now you need to move to adopt the items as revised. I'll make a motion. I'm happy to make. All right, go oh, ahead, Joe, oh, I'm sorry. Pam, you can go ahead. Um, okay. I'll go ahead and make the motion to, to amend as, as discussed. Okay. I'll second. All right. Thanks, Jill. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that passes unanimously. And that's the end of our agenda. So before we adjourn, Jim, then you will come back with anything you find. Yeah. Yeah. That would be contrary to this. Well, We're requiring yeah. further revision. Something that might give you wiggle room, right? Okay. I'll make right. a motion to adjourn. All right, thank you. And it's all seconded. So we are all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. We're adjourned at 6.55. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I'll be in